Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a fun one, something that has gotten the Twitter AI sphere chattering. A new model has appeared in the Limsys arena that appears to be some new version of GPT-4. It was first noticed last night and is named Anonymous Chatbot. Now, you might remember that the last time that we got a new OpenAI model, it appeared first in this sort of semi-anonymous form on the Limsys Arena, and so people are already speculating around what this might represent. When OpenAI leaker Jimmy Apples asked, what model are you? The anonymous chatbot responded, I'm based on OpenAI's GPT-4 architecture. Specifically, you're interacting with a version of GPT-4 that has been fine-tuned for chat-based interactions. This model is designed to understand and generate human-like text based on the input it receives. Now, of course, that could be a hallucination. It's no guarantee that that actually is what this model represents, but that's at least what it's self-reporting. Speculation is that it might be something called Q-Star. As the whole Sam Altman controversy was going down last November, Reuters and others reported that Q-Star was a new, more advanced reasoning model, and there was lots of speculation that safety concerns around Q-Star were part of what the rift was inside the organization. Later, of course, all the parties involved would say that it wasn't about a safety issue, although there are still many who just don't believe that. About a month ago, Reuters once again reported on the latest of QSTAR, although it was now codenamed Strawberry. Information came from an internal OpenAI document that was seen by Reuters in May. Quote, The document describes a project that uses Strawberry models with the aim of enabling the company's AI to not just generate answers to queries, but to plan ahead enough to navigate the internet autonomously and reliably to perform what OpenAI terms deep research. Two other Reuters sources had viewed demos of what OpenAI staffers told them was QSTAR, with the main difference being that it was able to answer science and math questions outside of the capacity of models like GPT-4. So back to this new model, another frequent AI leaker, Flowers, said anonymous chatbot was able to solve all my test puzzles on the first attempt. Another ex-user, Golden Hawk, said it can finally solve the river puzzle without some crazy and wrong solution. The river puzzle asks, if a man and a dog are on one side of a river and have a boat that can fit a human and an animal, how do they get to the other side? This has caused some trouble for existing LLMs, but anonymous chatbots seem to have no problem. For example, Llama 3.170b has this long convoluted answer that ends up with the man taking two trips across the river, whereas anonymous chatbot answered, this puzzle is pretty straightforward since the boat can fit both the man and the dog at the same time. The man and the dog simply get into the boat together and the man rows them across the river. Once they reach the other side, they both get out of the boat. That's it. Flowers responded, wow, that's great. I just hope they didn't intentionally overfit it to the usual memes because they knew these were the first things we would test. The model isn't perfect. When Feldsteam asked, a farmer is on one side of a river with a wolf, a goat, and a cabbage. When he is crossing the river in a boat, he can only take one item at a time with him. The wolf will eat the goat if left alone together, and the goat will eat the cabbage if left alone together. How can the farmer transport the goat across the river without it being eaten? It does ultimately get the right answer, but in a very convoluted way. Anyway, all of this is to say, and the most important part of this discussion, is that there appears to be another new OpenAI model being tested right now, which, as Andrew Curran points out, suggests that something new is on the way. Next up, staying on OpenAI for a minute, the company has announced a very requested feature from developers that are called Structured Outputs. They write, Last year at Dev Day, we introduced JSON Mode, a useful building block for developers looking to build reliable applications with our models. While JSON mode improves model reliability for generating valid JSON outputs, it does not guarantee that the model's response will conform to a particular schema. Today, we're introducing structured outputs in the API, a new feature designed to ensure model-generated outputs will exactly match JSON schemas provided by developers. They continue, generating structured data from unstructured inputs is one of the core use cases for AI in today's applications. Developers use the OpenAI API to build powerful assistants that have the ability to fetch data and answer questions via function calling, extract structured data for data entry, and build multi-step agentic workflows that allow LLMs to take action. Developers have long been working around the limitations of LLMs in this area via open source tooling, prompting, and retrying requests repeatedly to ensure that model outputs match the formats needed to interoperate with their systems. Structured output solves this problem by constraining OpenAI models to match developer supplied schemas and by training our models to better understand complicated schemas. Now, this is a feature that developers I've seen are very excited about. And interestingly, although it is a technology advance, in some ways it also matches the sort of product and user experience development that we're seeing happening elsewhere as well. A product feature designed to improve the product experience of using Claude. It's not some big technological advance. It just makes it a better tool because it separates the output panel from the instruction panel in a way that makes it a lot easier to use. 
This is not exactly the same, but it's also not totally different. This basically takes a use case that OpenAI understands and modifies the existing experience just to better match it. Now, there is some technological advance here, so like I said, it's not exactly the same, but you get it. We're moving into an era where there is more product consideration for specific use cases for LLMs rather than just a big blinking chatbot window. Now, almost buried in that announcement, there was also a significant price drop. Stephen Heidel from OpenAI said, oh yeah, nearly forgot to mention, the new 4.0 version with structured outputs is 50% cheaper for input, 33% cheaper for output, and is available immediately, no betas, previews, or waitlists. So this, of course, gets at two recent critiques of OpenAI. The perpetual question of cost, which, to be fair to them, has been coming down precipitously for some time now. And second, the fact that recently, they'd become one of those companies that announces things before they're available, leading to some chagrin among users. Interestingly, reports also came out today that back in 2017, Intel had a chance to buy a stake in OpenAI. Reuters writes that over a several-month period in 2017 and 2018, executives at OpenAI and Intel had discussed a variety of different arrangements, including Intel buying a 15% stake for a billion dollars in cash. They also discussed, apparently, Intel getting an additional 15% if it made hardware available for OpenAI at cost. And here we get the problem with ROI-based thinking. Intel ultimately decided against the deal, partly because then-CEO Bob Swan did not think generative AI models would make it to market in the near future and thus repay the chipmaker's investment. Now, I'm no mathematician, but if you look at 30% of the roughly $80 to $90 billion valuation that OpenAI commands right now, you'll see the problem of having too short a time horizon when you're making decisions around technology. But then again, one of the big stories that we keep coming back to is the tension between public market dynamics and private venture capital-style thinking. There is an incredible friction there that is leading to lots of weirdness in this space as it evolves. A couple more today before we get out of here. Audible is testing a new AI-powered search feature. Audible has a new personal recommendation expert they call Maven, through which a user can use natural language to enter queries. The example that TechCrunch gives is, I'm looking for an uplifting fiction novel with a female protagonist. For me, it would probably be something like, I'm looking for a historical thriller that involves the Templars or the Vatican's entity. One thing to watch out for when it comes to figuring out where in the hype cycle we are, when companies can no longer get news stories just for launching an AI feature, you will know we have entered a different phase. So far, we're not there yet. Case in point, Reddit is the latest to join the AI-powered summaries as part of Search. During an earnings call on Tuesday, CEO Steve Huffman said that Reddit would begin testing AI-powered Search results to summarize and recommend content. I am much less interested in the specifics for Reddit and much more interested in this broader trend of how search is being reorganized. It's something we've been watching in the context of perplexity, Google AI overviews, and more recently search GPT, and seems to be, at least for the moment, a broader shift. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.